Hello and welcome back to On the Workbench. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Berlin Flyer no-tip wagon. Put together and a few quick thoughts on it. So stay tuned and I'll show you how this gets put together right after this. Let's start this by unboxing the wagon. So here we can see at the end of the box here, it says Sport Wagon, Amish Made Red, Made in USA. And it says Bond Tool here. So that was interesting. So one of the things here is I already actually cracked this open because I was expecting to find a more aesthetically pleasing box rather than just a large brown paper box that this was shipped in from Amazon. I thought I'd have a more, maybe a more retail friendly box. I open this up and here's the parts that you get inside. So let's pull these parts out. I might pull this box open a little bit more and we'll see what all we get. As we get the package cracked open, we've got our Berlin wagon assembly instructions. We've got some wrap around some of the parts here. We've got these pre-painted red panels. There should be several of those. More foam nicely packed. That's all pre-assembled. So those should just slide in, pull off the foam. We've got some hardware that flipped around. Look at the inside of the wagon here. We've got these little, uh, uh, I guess, I know they're not rivets, but that's sort of kind of what they are. Let's forget what those are actually called. And then we've got the wagon itself. And then here's what we get for the parts of the wagon. We've got our wheels here. If we look at these wheels, the outside of the box did say made in USA. If you look at the wheels here, they say made in China, not for highway use. It's interesting it says made in China, or as the box said made in USA. Maybe they should have put a little small disclaimer with it that some of the parts may have other global origins, but I'm sure the wood is all USA. Pull this out. We've got what I think is the pull handle. Here, let's get the wheel out. It's interesting, like some of these wheels are definitely kind of shiny. I thought these actually might have a pneumatic nipple on them uh, that you could inflate with uh, an inflator, but it does not appear to be. These appear to just be solid foam rubber tires. So we got our four wheels. We got some caps. And then we've got our pull handle. So the rest of the hardware here is already attached. I don't have to assemble the trucks or anything else here on the front for the steering mechanism. This is supposedly a tip-free design. And so it looks like here we're going to mount the wheels. We've got a bearing on both sides. The one tool we're going to need is a hammer. And the first step is going to be to take our hardware and pull out the four uh, snap nuts, pop nuts, pop rivets, they're not really rivets, but uh, these hardware, and then we got two washers, and then we're going to put one washer on each of the two front, on each front axle, so one here, and one on the other side, and then our wheels go on in any order. There are not different front and rear wheels. Put the longer side towards the middle, and I'll leave an appropriate size gap on the other side. Repeat the process, so then I'm going to take one of these nuts and then try to at least push it on the axle at least a little bit here to get it set by hand. I'm going to take my hammer. A couple good taps that will hold it on secure. Repeat the process on the other four wheels, or I'm sorry, the other three wheels. And the rear wheels do not get a washer, they just get uh, the nut. And on the rear side, you got to pay attention. There's these, uh, not quite suspension arms, but these diagonal members here that do pull out just a little bit. Make sure they're pushed in, otherwise the wheels will not have enough clearance. So we'll go on to the back wheels, to the back wheels next.
All right, with all four wheels firmly on, we're gonna flip our wagon over. And now the next thing here is we can look at our red panels. We can take our red panels and these just simply drop in. One, two, three, four, although maybe that one needs to go five, and six. You notice there is one panel that actually has this uh, Berlin Sport no-tip steering printed on. The other ones are all just plain red. So if you want, you could swap that around. Maybe that's actually best in front. And so there's our red sides on our wagon. Now we need to be able to actually pull the wagon. So here's the wagon handle. We're gonna just pull it out of the plastic packaging. With the handle out of the plastic packaging, you notice there is a bend in the handle. You want that, this elbow here going forward. Then over here in the front, there's a pin here that we can pull the side off. Like that. And then we can then pull this pin out. And then we got our handle that we can slide through here. And put our pin back through like that. And go back around to the other side and then engage that clip. Just like that. And now we've got our handle so we can steer it to the left and to the right. And then with that kink in front, it'll hold the, the handle up just like that. And then the final bit of our parts are these red plastic bumpers. We open these up here. There's a whole mess of these. These I don't know that these, I would say these are essential, but they're still provided. It even says here, adult assembly required place rubber end caps over the end of the slats. And so just to show you one of these, these bumpers theoretically go over the end, just like that. Repeat for all of the corners. Okay, we're fully assembled now. We got all the little rubber bumpers on and one quick correction. There's actually two of these panels, one for the front and one for the back. And if you flip it around so these letters face outward, there's actually creates a much more tight gap on the inside, especially if you're gonna have kids in there. So a couple of quick measurements. If we look at ground clearance between the ground and the bottom of the deck is about 10 and three quarter inches. If you wanna look at clearance under that axle there, we're looking at a, about four and seven eighths of an inch beneath the axle. But with those large wheels, I'll say to help you traverse a rough yard or rough terrain, cracks in sidewalks, faulted sidewalks. The depth of the wagon inside of the top of the rail is eight and a half inches, maybe eight and seven eighths to the top of the rail from the bottom. And then the length inside the wagon here is just a touch under 34, I don't know, maybe 33 and seven eighths, give or take, to the inside. And then the handle for this wagon has a length of 20, let's call it 29 and a half inches. You could extend the handle forward. There is no rubber cushion grip on the handle. It'd be nice if, these, if the handle did have a little bit of rubber on it, just to make it a little bit maybe easier on small children's hands. But by not having a rubber on there, you could put this behind perhaps a yard tractor and pull this. I'm not sure if that would actually be a safe idea or not, but I'm just saying you could. A couple other things to point out. If we look in the rear, you can see there's actually some metal reinforcement uh, through that piece of wood and through this piece of wood to provide some extra lateral stability. The overall height off of the ground, about 20, about 20 and a quarter inches. So overall, I feel like this is actually pretty well constructed. All the screws are already tight, 
This is good, good. All you do is put on the wheels. And I like the steering, it doesn't tip. There's no chance of this wobbling over. And so I don't know how well this is gonna weather or last. I mean, with the wood, this should probably be kept inside. There is a finish applied, so it shouldn't rot away. Um, and even if it does, you know, start to have some weathering, you could try to paint it up and try to salvage it. The fasteners look like they're easy to replace. The only concern about fasteners are these holders right here. These are riveted into the wood, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure why they wouldn't have screwed that in to make that more user serviceable. So one of the things I like about this is that you can pull the, the panels apart and turn this into just a flatbed wagon. So if I need to carry soil or fertilizer around the yard, I can do that. My kids can play in it. And so that was one of the big selling points for this is that if my kids needed a wagon, well then dad needed a, uh, the wagon to be functional for him for doing yard work. Uh, or if you wanna put plants on it to, as you're planting spring plants or spring annuals, that we can put all that in here. I didn't really want a cheap plastic wagon that was only good for just my kids to play in for a couple years. This should last for a while. It's got metal hardware. Although I feel like it'd be nice and maybe this is asking too much if on some of the steering connections there was a grease zerk where I could come back and grease that just to lubricate that up. But that probably needs a little bit of lube as well as these bearings. It's probably on a yearly basis to keep the bearings from wearing or rusting. In the grand scheme of things, in terms of wear, I'd anticipate these wheel bearings being the first to wear, but you could easily replace these entire wheel assemblies with actual real pneumatic tires. I don't think that'd be that hard to do. You could probably run down to a tractor supply or some other farm store and be able to buy actual pneumatic tires. Just look for ones that have bearings in it, measure up your axles, and you should be good to go. And so with that, that's a look at the Berlin Flyer Sport No-Tip Steer Wagon. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. Have a great day. Bye.